Tuesday, June 26, 2018. The board will take formal action on payment of bills and other agenda items. The Old Bridge Township Board of Education acknowledges that the law of this state establishes that members of the public, including members of the board, have the right to record public board meetings using audio or video recording devices, provided that that act of recording does not interfere with the business of this public board meeting. Therefore, the board makes it known that any such recording is to be considered the private recording of the individual and in no manner represents the official record of this board. The board therefore takes no responsibility for such private recording and completely disavows any future use. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Roll call, please. Callie. Present. DeCaro. Here. DePrima. Here. Dinoff. Present. Lent. Here. Reed. Here. Singh. Here. Sulikowski. Present. Dunn. Present, Mr. Mayor. Quorum exists. Thank you. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. In memoriam, move the board acknowledge the death of Zach Antonizzi, 2016 Oldbridge High School graduate, and express its deepest sympathy to his family and friends. Thank you. This evening, uh, Jill DeCaro will read the Code of Ethics for the month of June. The board member will refuse to surrender his or her independent judgment to special interest or partisan political groups or to use the schools for personal gain or for the gain of friends. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. As you can see, we have our 2017-2018 district goals and 2017 and 2018 board goals as part of, as part of the agenda. Uh, before we get it, uh, started this evening, we are going to have a uh, addendum uh, to the recognition portion of tonight's uh, presentation. Uh, we will have a item number 11, which will be Relay for Life, and they will be presenting something to the board, I believe. So I made that uh, addition this, this evening. Moving forward, approval of mints. May I have a motion, please? Callie will move. Thank you, Ms. Callie. May I have a second? Dinoff will second. Thank you, Mr. Dinoff. Any concern, conversation, or revisions? Not seeing any. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolution 1 pass. Very well. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, moving forward, tonight we have a new uh, representative uh, from our Oak Bridge High School class. Uh, Dylan Norwicki? No, Nowinski. Nowinski. Very good. And he'll be performing the report of the student representative to the board. Welcome, Dylan. Thank you very much. I uh, just want to say how much of an honor it is to be here up with you guys. Um, this year we had uh, Lori Hernandez at our graduation and she spoke and she also attended our prom and Arthur Sitowski also attended our prom and he's going to be, he is running to be the Q, starting QB of Rutgers. So, thank you very much, guys. <laughs> thank you. I like the abbreviation, but I'm sure going forward, you're going to have a lot more to share with us going forward over the next uh, year. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much. You're welcome, sir. Dziękuję. You speak Polish? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> very well. Thank you again. So, we're going to move forward. Uh, recognition. Mr. Cedadino, it's all yours, sir. Okay, we have a, a, a 
bountiful amount of recognition tonight. We have some recognition that, we, that we're not going to cover tonight on the agenda because we covered it last week as part of our agenda building session. Uh, so we're going to go through those. Everyone, um, item number one and two was covered last week. Um, item number three was covered. Um, so at this time, I would like to uh, go to item number four, move the board to recognize Melissa Thatcher, Colin Bell, and Anthony Good uh, of the Oldbridge High School Marching Band and Percussion for their second place silver medal in percussion world championships at the University of Dayton, Ohio. The group advanced to the, from the preliminaries to the semifinals to the finals for a competitive race against 40 other U.S. In international ensembles. Oldbridge was awarded the fan favorite, no surprise there, where thousands of people voted in their favorite uh, competing group. Their highest accomplishment was the indoor percussion so far. Additionally, Oldbridge High School indoor percussion was undefeated in their regular season from November to April, placing first and winning gold medals at the Mid-Atlantic Percussion Society Championships. So I would like to have, uh, I think I have a lot of people from indoor percussion and band up there, of having gone to a lot of the programs, the fundraisers, going back to even um, our, our time in uh, Normandy. And raise your hand if you were part of that trip too. Anybody there still left? There you go, some left in the back still. Um, what a tremendous group. They really have given us international and national recognition for their, for their work. And to do that, we have a very special plaque made. I'm gonna come up and present it to uh, their leader, Miss Thatcher, but uh, this nice plaque says, presented to Oldbridge High School Indoor Percussion in recognition of your silver medal at the World Championships of Dayton, Ohio. The Oldbridge High School Indoor Percussion is recognized and appreciated for all they've done to put Oldbridge High School on the world map. Thank you very much. And this goes out to that <laughs> tremendous group. I have to say we're very proud of this group. I don't know if the entire audience knows, but, but judging by your applause, most of you probably know. Um, and it's not just a coincidence that I'm wearing this lovely shirt. Our, our marching band will be representing New Jersey and the United States um, in Hawaii in December. Uh, rec I think if I'm correct, to recommission uh, the USS New Jersey, and we are representing New Jersey, the only New Jersey band going to be there. Of course, uh, another great honor uh, for this band and all the work that they do. You can't count out their parents. They load trucks, they build sets, they do everything to make it possible. Um, it's a really a wonderful community of the marching band, the indoor percussion community that works so well together and raise so much funds for these trips. So again, thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you in Hawaii. Great job.
Now the second part of this shirt is that it's a tribute I mentioned at the middle school uh, graduation. I like spirit. I like people who really go out of their way to be themselves. Don't try to be someone else. And Brendan O'Dwyer's in the back. He's a graduating senior, big part of the TV studio and the nightly wrap up. Brendan, why don't you come out so we can see what you're wearing tonight? <laughs> and this is, uh, this is not new for him. He dresses like this every day. I've recognized it since he was a freshman. So I said to him, because you know, he has good attendance, good grades, doing good things, where are you going to school next year? Brendan, where are you going to school next year? Uh, College of St. Rose. In no. Very nice. I said, as a tribute to you, I will wear one of your shirts. You pick out the shirt, and I wear it. So he dropped this off to my office today. So thank you. Very nice. OK. All right, so now we're going to let's talk about our, our volleyball team. Right on the heels of that, we have a, a state championship volleyball team. Is Coach Hopman and the team up there? Come on up here to the uh, any members of the volleyball team and Coach Hopman, if you want to please come up to the stage. No. Come on, guys. Maybe they're beating someone right now. Maybe they're out, they're out beating someone else. Um, so they're not here. We want to recognize them. Uh, they are our first um, team, overall team state championship. And what that means is uh, teams will compete in the GMC championship against um, your group, and then you go into group championships, and then they take all the groups for their parochial and everything else uh, for an overall state champion. And our volleyball team did win that championship, and we're very proud of them. Uh, I want to thank the community for all coming together, support them on their way home uh, from the game in South Brunswick, from our uh, South Oldbridge Fire, Oldbridge Police Department, uh, our transportation department, everyone getting together to make that celebration possible. Again, great accolades for them. Thank you very much uh, for, for them, and they deserve all the recognition that they, they received. So thank you, for, and congratulations to our Oldbridge High School volleyball team. Okay, number six, uh, if we can have our principal of Carpenter School, Mr. McHugh, come on up to the stage. I believe he has a presentation. Uh, move the Board of Education to recognize Overs High School football team and their coach, Anthony Lanzafama, for the participation in Dr. Seuss Day and Field Day at M. Scott Carpenter Elementary School. Their participation in both activities was integral to the success of these programs, and the players made a significant impact to the students and staff. Good evening, Board of Ed, Mr. Cittadino. I do have to comment, I like that shirt. Uh, I could use one, I'll go to Hawaii with you if you, you need somebody to chaperone there. Um, I think Dylan's competing, he's already, he's all in over there. <laughs> uh, but tonight we're here for three special reasons and the first reason here is to honor Coach Lonza Fama, his staff and the football players uh, for their outstanding job that they do every year at Carpenter Elementary School. Uh, it started back in February of 2012. I just became the principal of Carpenter Elementary School on February 1st, and you're looking through the events, and you see the, the first major event you have is Dr. Seuss Week, and we have things scheduled all that week. And you're working with Paula Hamill and Gail Vincentini to make sure it runs smoothly. You want your first event to you know, go without a hitch. And just days prior to that, Paula Hamill stops me in the hallway and says, one of the Old Bridge High School clubs needs to back out. And that was a highlight of that week where the Old Bridge High School kids would come and read to our younger students. So without hesitation and being right across the room from Mrs. Lonza Fama, I said, why don't we ask the football players? And they immediately agreed, made the arrangements, and came over. And for the last seven years, I got to tell you, it is a highlight of Carpenter Elementary School when these young men come off the bus they are dressed with their Dr. Seuss hats on, their football jerseys, and they are amazing. I mean, they will be on the floor with the kids, reading with them. Um, they're so gentle and kind to the kids. 
and uh, one of them gets to be Dr. Seuss. I don't know how you guys pick that. I don't know if Coach picks it or you guys pick it, but one of them gets to dress up as Dr. Seuss, and they just come in for an hour and a half and do an amazing job with our, our students here. And this year, they um, also had the task of not only reading, but they uh, were given a bag full of items because one of our goals this year was uh, doing more STEAM activities, and they had to create their own Dr. Seuss character um, and the bag was a water bottle, string, and some various other items, and they had to create their own Dr. Seuss character and name it with the students. And it was amazing, and we displayed them on, on the front hallway on a table there. Um, about four years ago, they were lining up to leave the building, and um, some of them got real excited when they saw what was going on, on, going on in our gym, and they jumped in and started participating in, the, in one of our phys ed classes. And that just sparked an idea, what if we asked them to come to field day? And coach again agreed to come to field day, and um, they just get out there, and I don't know who has more fun, uh, whether it's the kids or you, because you run around with them, you play with them, you get involved, you show leadership um, to them, and they look at you as heroes. And there was one event this year where one of our students had to do a relay, and um, it's like he has, he's autistic, and he was having a little trouble with the, the relay, and a football player reached his hand down, and, and the, the boy gave him his hand, and together they did the relay. And that young boy looked at, at the football player and just looked at him the whole time smiling because they were participating in the relay together. And I said, Coach, i got to acknowledge you guys. He's never wanted this before. I've asked him time and time again, um, but that event was truly amazing to watch. And the first question every year out of the kids' mouth and our family's mouth are the football players coming. And you guys can come for many years. I know other teams are now have gotten involved um, over the years and going to different schools here. But I will tell you, when those kids walk in the building, you are extremely respectful and polite. And uh, that starts from Mr. Lonza Fama and his staff in there. So for the past seven years, all that you've done we decided that we wanted to give you, and with the help of Mrs. Tilton, she's very creative, uh, pictures that you can hang up either in your office or in the team room, uh, thanking you. It has all the years that the football players have attended and how important they are to us here. So, Coach, thank you so much. I look forward to many years. And thank you, Mrs. Tilton, for, for making that. We take a nice picture. Okay, uh, Mr. McHugh, you're going to stand for there for the next two, correct? So yes. I move the Board of Education to recognize Daniela Giancelli, second grader at M. Scott Carpenter School, for efforts in organizing and creating the school wide disability awareness and video lesson, along with an activity in which students were able to participate. Come on, come on up, Daniela. We're going to put you right here. Maybe if you could stand up on that stage right there. Daniela is a second grade student at Carpenter Elementary School, and uh, we are recognizing her for efforts in organizing and creating a school-wide disability lesson as a seven-year-old. That is very impressive here. Uh, she was inspired by a story she read in, in Mrs. Fanning's class through her Journeys program about the life of Helen Keller. So she stopped me in the hallway, and she said, I have an idea. Would you be interested in it? 
and she said she wanted the students of Carpenter to understand what it would be like if they had to live as a blind person. I mean, I love the idea. I mean, uh, and I mean, I give her a lot of credit. I think in second grade, I don't, I don't think I would have come out to my principal. He was a nice guy, but I, <laughs> so even though I've known her for years and she's great, but um, I said, we're gonna make sure this, this is gonna happen. And um, you know, I asked Mrs. Tilton to get involved. She's very creative and artistic. And uh, we sat together around the table and we threw out some ideas. And uh, so we decided then that we we're gonna make a video and Daniela was going to do research on her herself, where she was going to do facts about Helen Keller's life and a little bit of history about her life. And then she was going to demonstrate an activity, and she was going to incorporate our school's theme, which is teamwork and sportsmanship. And we were going to share the video with our staff at the faculty meeting to let them know. And they were on board once they saw the video. It was truly amazing here. And. Um, we picked a day, and it was a special day. It was May 24th. That was her birthday, and it also um, the month of May. There's Special Education Awareness Week, so we we tied everything in together with that. So Daniela created a video, and each grade level had to draw a picture, and she demonstrated with her eyes closed how to draw a picture, and it all had to do with sports themes. And as you went up to the to the higher grades, it got a little more difficult. Not an easy thing to do, right? No, not at all here, but uh, I really just wanted to thank you for doing this and um, just thank you for every day coming in the building with such a smile on your face and so excited and eager to learn and I want to thank your family here for raising a wonderful young lady here and our students and staff for participating in this activity and Mrs. Tilton for all of her help with the video and this. this. So we have a nice certificate for you there, Daniela. Okay. For the odds I picked the wrong one. I got two. So here we go, Daniela. So we're gonna come up here. We're gonna take a nice tour right here. Nice picture. Oh, come on over here, Mrs. Tillon. Get over here. Are you sneaking away? <laughs> Can you get a picture like this? Thank you. Great job, Daniela. We need more people just like you in this world. So the hits keep coming from Carpenter School. This one was like, uh, almost went viral on, on Twitter. So move the Board of Education to recognize Kaylin Quaglia, kindergarten student at M. Scott Carpenter School, uh, for her efforts in taking the initiative to organize a lemonade stand fundraiser for Relay for Life. During the event, she raised over $100 and was surprised by a special visit from Olympic gold medalist Lori Hernandez. Carpenter School is extremely proud of Kaylin's uh, community spirit to support such a worthy cause. <laughs> uh, here we, we are tonight rec recognizing Kaylin. Uh, a five-year-old kindergarten student in Miss Ionella's class here. She heard one day on the announcements that uh, we were organizing a Relay for Life event, and that night at the dinner table, she went home and asked her parents um, how she can get involved and, and what she could do. And she, on herself, on her own, decided that she was going to have a lemonade stand on a Saturday morning here, and then donate all the money for Relay for Life. And she got a surprise visit, right? From gold medal Olympic athlete Lori Hernandez came over to support such a great cause here. Um, you're lucky. I've never had the opportunity to meet somebody that won a gold medal. And uh, you did. Um, that's amazing here. Um, she not only did it once, but she did the event twice. She had two lemonade sales, and she raised over $235. And I heard her brother Marco in the back. Marco! You want to wave? He was helping out too. <laughs> so um, our school 
raised over $3,000, and a lot of that was good part to Caitlin and the family. So I wanted to thank Caitlin and all of our Carpenter families for their donation. I want to thank Mrs. Ambos, our fifth grade teacher, for organizing the event. Um, I want to thank the Qualia family for a nice email that they did, that they sent to our staff and myself about uh, how uh, at Carpenter we teach students about it's how important it is to help others and, and your nice words in that letter. And um, Lori Hernandez, really want to thank Lori for coming out, if she's watching tonight, um, for making some girls dream and lifelong memory for some girls. So thank you, Caitlin. Caitlin, sorry. Um, and here's a nice certificate, what an amazing thing as a five-year-old to do. So. I just, need to, I just need to talk to Kaylin when she's done. <laughs> I want to make sure everyone hears both of us. So what's your recipe? Like, do you squeeze the lemons and add sugar, or was it like a mix? Well, we have, like, the um, little things that you only put in and then you mix it and that's all it makes. Oh, all right, so you use the mix. Right. And it's not lost on me that you're wearing a lemon dress. <laughs> Is, did, did you pick that out or did you get help, help at home? Um, my mom helped me. Okay. So are you going to do this next year? Uh, yeah. What, do you know when you do it? Do you have this date picked out? I know the answer. Okay. I'm going to give you $20 to front your purchase of all the lemonade mix. And you let me know when it is, and I'll come by and buy some lemonade, too. Okay. All right? Bye. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm going to go over to the, the podium for this one. Um, uh, move the board to acknowledge Old Bridge resident and Wellspring Prevention Recovery Coach Jenna Lynn Bonstein. Ms. Bonstein demonstrated heroic commitment to opioid overdose pre prevention by sharing her battle with addiction with over 800 plus parents who attended the superintendent's mandatory hidden in plain sight eighth grade awareness sessions. Ms. Bonstein is a courageous member of our community fighting substance abuse overdoses one person, one session, and one day at a time. So I have some stuff for Ms. Bonstein. Can you join me at the dais? Thank you very much for everything you've done for, uh, for everyone, for the families um, who have been fallen victims of overdose and for sharing your story because for all the uh, sessions that we had, and I think we had over six of them, uh, and Jenna was there, uh, she brought a face to it, an Old Bridge face, for those parents who said, not my kid, it would never happen. Jenna talked about her experience growing up as a, a good student, an athlete, from a good family, and it happened. And it can happen to everyone, anyone. Um, we just have to keep our guard up and protect our family and our loved ones. So thank you, Jenna. A little plaque for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so I just want to say one thing. So if you're not aware, so Jenna, um, you know, she faced her battle with addiction, uh, lost loved ones, um, been to more funerals than I've been to. And I said I had been to seven. I think you said, you know, you lost at least 29 friends or peers to, uh, to overdose. And I think the most heroic part of what Jenna does is if someone is given Narcan for an overdose, She's the first person they see when they come out of it. She is contacted. She goes there, and she helps and tries to get them help immediately to start the recovery process, to start the uh, fight, fight against addiction. And, you know, if you think about that, you know, there's two paths. You most, I think one path that most people take when they fight addiction is just to keep away from those stressors and those threats and those temptations. Um, I mean, that's probably what I would do if I was fighting uh, such an addiction. But she throws herself back into it. She puts herself up against the people who are fighting it and, uh, I, you know, always puts her sobriety 
on the line whenever she does that for other people. So I think she's one of the greatest heroes I ever met. So thank you. Okay, we're gonna have Mr. Maranzoli go to the dais now. Uh, Mr. Maranzoli is going to share with us the partnership with P Princeton University's Pace Center. So move the board to recognize the partnership between Princeton University and the Pace Center for Civic Engagement and thank them for their donation of books and supplies to uh, Ms. Christine Tilton, counselor of the Carpenter Elementary School and Ms. Jean Sarkowski, counselor of Shepherd Elementary School in order to enhance the school's elementary counseling programs. There we go. Good evening, Mr. Cittadino. Thank you, Central Administrative Team, uh, Board of Education, families, friends. Um, we've got a very interesting um, program and a small PowerPoint tonight for you uh, to kind of explain a, a partnership that has developed just to uh, give you an idea of some of the things that are going on. So to the mic, I will call Kirsten Tilton um, to go over uh, the initial parts of it. Good evening. Um, so we begin with the end in mind. It's a habit that we teach our students as they embark on new projects. In fourth grade, students envision their future and embrace lifelong learning. Immersing students into a college campus opens doors to their imaginations. Engaging them with the hands-on lessons allows them to experience excitement, fun, and success within a higher education learning environment. Creating positive emotions and personal connections with higher education can be very powerful and in changing their trajectory of a student's life. It is our hope that students will be inspired. We set high expectations for all students and they internalize their ability to grow their intelligence with grit and enthusiasm. We guide students in their vision of futures as they begin their journey of self-discovery and set lifelong terms. Kids at college let students see a glimpse of what it's, beyond, what it's like beyond the four walls of their fourth grade classroom. In order to bring this to fruition every year, our program relies on building relationships, relationships with the host colleges and universities. We tap into these resources, people, facilities, and 18 different institutions. Our partners dedicate their time and talents to welping, welcoming our students on campus for the day and put together tours and lessons that they will remember for a lifetime. We, in turn, work to ensure that the partnership is truly a collaborative one. We share the time, talents, and creativity of our dedicated faculty with our partners to work collaboratively towards goals that we align with them. A few years ago, we forged a remarkable partnership with the Peace Center for Civic Engagement at Princeton University. The center's mission is to ensure that a meaningful service is part of the university experience for Princeton students. Pace Center encourages their students to grow as individuals as they respond to the needs throughout the community and throughout the world. Their need was to ensure that the university students use their strengths and talents to provide meaningful services. So we are here tonight to thank uh, the Pace Center for bringing us into the fold as one of their community partners. We have truly enjoyed working with the university students and sharing our students with them. It truly warms my heart to see Princeton students creating inspiring trips for our fourth graders and leaving a lasting impression on them. Over the course of these last two years, Old Bridge faculty and administrators have volunteered their time and talents during the Pace Center's Spring Leadership Intensive. The volunteers throughout our district who have supported the Kids at College program have enjoyed participating in these workshops and the panel discussions regarding service. This year, we are expanding our partnership with Pace to develop an immersion-based learning environment for their uh, community action program. This is where first-year students connect with their new Princeton family and communities throughout New Jersey as they engage in meaningful projects.
Participating in the various Pace Center events on campus and our, collaborative, our, our collaborations does three things for us as a district. It generates new ideas for program development, our abilities to identify needs, brainstorm ideas, and ex execute new strategies have been enhanced by our partnership with all the amazing individuals at the Pace. Number two, while attending events, we have forged new relationships with, relationships with individuals throughout the university who have taken on an interest at the Kids at College program and have begun the process of starting other collaborative ventures here in Old Bridge. Having these relations energizes us to continually strive for excellence in education. And last but not least, we grow professionally. When working with the Pace Center for Civic Engagement, you cannot help but to question your own sense of civic engagement. Our faculty that have worked with the Pace have had a renewed sense of commitment to use their talents to give back, make a difference, and become better role models for our students as we demonstrate what it means to serve the greater good. So for all these reasons, we'd like the board to recognize this amazing partnership that has been forged between our two educational institutions. We have aligned goals and have worked collaboratively to ensure that our students engage the world around them with a sense of wonder. Together, we ensure that students of all ages become leaders here and now, embrace a love of learning, develop a sense of social responsibility, and thrive in their academic pursuits. I'm sure if you look at any of the Old Bridge accomplishments, you see that sense of social responsibility. In this year's response to assisting Spring Leadership Intensive, PACE has donated books and materials which will support the elementary school counseling and kids at college programs here in Old Bridge. The materials will be used for school-wide activities, classroom lessons, RTI intervention, planning, parent support, and further program development. So on behalf of the elementary school counseling program, Shepherd School, our district, we'd like to recognize the Pace Center for Civic Engagement for this amazing partnership, and we'd like to thank them for the gift of books and supplies to our programs. Here to accept this recognition is David Brown, the assistant director of the Pace Center for Civic Engagement at Princeton University. And this is the certificate for him. Okay. Photo opportunity. There we go. So, thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. I have one more item that I'm going to administratively move from finance to um, recognition, and I'll have Ms. Thatcher come up to the dais, uh, this time to present uh, acknowledgement. Uh, move the board to accept a generous grant in amount of $1,700 from the Old Bridge Elks to the Old Bridge High School Marching Knights to be used towards their Pearl Harbor uh, commemoration program. Thank you. Hi, um, I would like to call up Renee Bangert um, and Frank Tevis from the Old Bridge Elks. Uh, Michael D. Simone reached out to me, I want to say about a month or so ago, telling me that they had applied for a grant where they could give a, a community activity, the, the grant money, to go towards something. Um, that was outstanding and our marching knights have been selected to represent the uh, state of New Jersey as well as the United States at the Pearl Harbor anniversary this December. So we will be leaving on December 3rd and returning on December 10th. It's a, an amazing opportunity. We're going to be marching right through the center of Honolulu for the, uh, the parade that evening and then in the morning we're going to be performing right on the lawn in front of the USS M Missouri um, to commemorate that um, tragic day. So um, I would like to recognize these two and I, I want to thank you because this has defrayed the students' cost greatly um, and it's a huge help towards them performing at such an amazing event. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, moving forward, we do have one more recognition which will be given out this evening, and it's going to be from Kelly Ellis Forster and Relay for Life. Come to the podium. Thank okay. you. Thank you very, very thanks very much. Um, this recognition is actually uh, from Old Bridge Relay for Life to the district and to um, so many of the people actually who are here. So it's it's great who were part of the success of the Relay for Life. So I, I have some notes, and I really really don't want to miss some people, and I I, I know I probably will, but. Um, this year, for uh, it was our 10th anniversary, uh, we had our date earlier in the year um, so that we could get more participation from the district. Uh, and b boy, did they come through this year. It has been uh, amazing. Um, it started, it, my first meeting was in January with Dr. Hoker and Ms. Pachuki, who is the uh, advisor for the character ambassadors, uh, who came up with some great ideas um, and really kicked off out of fundraisers. Um, and then throughout the whole spring, uh, the district, students, clubs, schools uh, were a part of fundraisers, big and small. So uh, Kaylin, where'd she go? She's back there, really uh, exemplifies uh, what our students did uh, as far as supporting and coming and helping out in Relay. So I just want to mention some of the things that we did this year uh, with the school that really made it a, a special year. So we had uh, the character ambassadors. Uh, really picked this cause up. They had an ice skating night, and they also sold Vineyard Vine shirts. We had all the schools participating in the luminaries. Um, Dr. Ferry at Cheesequake uh, participated in uh, Stick It to Your Principal, where students could buy a piece of duct tape and duct tape him to the wall. Uh, so that was a fun activity. Doc, uh, Mr. Daly and the uh, teachers over at Madison Park were dunked in their dunk tank and raised over $700 just on that one event alone. Uh, so it was uh, all kinds of great things. The other big thing we did this year is our first annual uh, Old Bridge High School uh, staff and district softball game against the Old Bridge PBA. Uh, so we're looking forward to doing that next year and you know maybe we could bring the trophy home. You know, not, not pressure there, but you know hopefully we can, can bring that back uh, to Old Bridge. So it was just a great uh, great support from the whole district. Um, so I do want to mention um, a, a few people who made the event and the day possible. Um, I, I have to thank our facilities staff, uh, led by Kevin Canton. Uh, we had Johnny G and uh, Gilberto, Gustavo, uh, Brandon, and uh, they were amazing. For over 17 hours, they had the facilities open for us, helped us with everything that we needed. Um, we actually had to move the event inside. We usually try to have it on Lombardi, uh, but they were phenomenal. Um, and then throughout the day, um, so many of the groups. So the football team was there early in the morning, helping us set up, getting everything going. Uh, we had the peer students there all day helping us. We had the jazz ensemble who uh, provided entertainment for our survivor uh, luncheon, which was the first time, which was fabulous. As usual, the marching band kicked off the event. We had our junior ROTC. We had the dance team. We had um, the Red Cross Club. We had uh, Sir OB. We had Brandon actually helped us with two events. So I know he's still back there. Uh, so we had him. We had two of our uh, faculty from Salk. Uh, Mr. Cirillo and Mr. Garrison with their pizza that they donated all their profits to. So it was just a phenomenal uh, event. Um, so we wanted to really thank uh, the district. Um, as I said, it was our highest, I'm not sure if I said yet, but it was our highest grossing fundraiser year uh, of, of our 10 years. So uh, I, the other group, uh, the Old Bridge uh, High School PTSA um, was there that day helping us. And again, I know I'm probably forgetting people, so I truly apologize. Um, I want to first also just recognize a few of our top teams um, from the district. We had over 13 teams with several hundred participants just from the district alone. Um, so Teachers Against Cancer, which was a team made up primarily of McDivitt and Southwood, uh, raised 5,837. Grissom and Carpenter made over 2,300. We had our character ambassadors make over 2,519. Cheesequake uh, made over 2,200. Madison Park with uh, over 3,700. And Salk 
uh, under the leadership of uh, Lucy Kurtz, who was our fundraising chair, over 7,000. Um, so at the end of the day, um, our relay made um, over $72,000. <laughs> Of which, of which, which twenty eight thousand came from the school district. So, the um, highest amount ever. Ever, ever. So, thank you so much. Uh, this is our temporary banner. We're going to get hopefully a really nice banner that uh, you can hang up. So, thank you, thank you to everybody here, uh, and uh, everybody. Thank you. See you next year. See you next. So, <laughs> we are working on our date right now uh, for next year. So, you know, Mr. Sedadina, you can write a check. I'll take it. It's fine. Thank you, Kelly Ellis Forster. It's wonderful that uh, the Board of Education and the administration can work with Relay for Life uh, for such a fine um, program um, helping for a great cause. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Recognition. I need uh, a motion on items 1 through 11 and also for point 20 on finance. I have Reed a motion. motion. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Can I have a second? Callie will second. Thank you, Ms. Callie. Any discussion or concerns? Go ahead, Ms. Callie. I know we usually have these comments at the end, but by that time, all the uh, people who have been recognized leave. So I just thought it might be nice if we could, you know, have our comments on recognition now. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, but first of all, congratulations to everybody that's been recognized. Your, your efforts to make this district what it is, is, is phenomenal. So I applaud each and every one of you. Um, our percussion, uh, our indoor percussion, what an amazing, an amazing um, accomplishment this year. Um, our volleyball team, another amazing accomplishment for the first time in Old Bridge history um, to the football team. Now, um, Right after Sandy, I had the pleasure of working with Coach Lanzafama, who um, the day before the telethon on a Friday at 2 o'clock got a frantic call from me because another group backed out to help us set up for the telethon, which was to aid Old Bridge South River and South Amboy. And I know that none of you boys were a part of this, but this goes to the character and the the not just the football skills that your coach coaches instill in you, but the sense of community and, and giving back. And like I said, I, I had the pleasure of working with Coach Lons um, during the Sandy Telethon. And to get a call like that at 2 o'clock and at 2.05 to call me back and say that he got you know 15 football players to meet me at 7 o'clock in the morning the next day to help set up. So uh, I, I know that your group coach is, is one that we can always count on. We have a lot of groups in the high school that we can count on, but I know that you know at the last minute, you guys always come through. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, Daniela and Kaylin, um, keep going. That is a, a great thing that you're doing at such a young age to have that sense of giving back in community. Uh, it's definitely a tribute to your family um, and, and I appreciate your efforts. And, um, and Jenna, is Jenna still here? Jenna, I, I can. Thank you. So you know how important that is to me personally through the Municipal Alliance. And, you know, we share a, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm done with that. And um, to uh, Pace University for their uh, donation to our counseling program. And um, I'm sorry, I'm missing somebody. The Elks and, and Kelly and Lucy, you guys are phenomenal. Are you still here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> you guys are phenomenal in your efforts. And I know that that's a town-wide effort, but that town-wide effort could not be possible with your countless hours of, uh, of hard work. And if I forgot anybody, I apologize, but I really wanted to get that out there while everybody's still here. Thank you. Jill, I echo. I echo exactly what you said. Thank you.
Anyone else? Mr. Caro? Well, yeah, I just want to say I, I was taking a lot of notes during all of this and it just what an amazing night. So many, so many people and groups to be recognized and, and I had taken a lot of notes and I was going to say a lot of things, but I believe well, I that I believe that no, no, no. <laughs> I believe that Mrs. Kelly really said it very well, and um, I'm not, you know, what she said, you know, really, you know, and the football team, you know, you know how I feel, Coach Lonsafam. I mean, my two two of my kids actually played for you, and the character that you, uh, it's just the leadership that you have that just portrays to all of your your football players. Just it's just beyond. I'm always so proud to be uh, to be part of that. So thank you. And uh, again, I'm not going to repeat everything that Ms. Kelly said, but I did o and echo what she said. So congratulations to everyone. Mr. DePrima, I know that sure, you're Mr. Dunn, thank you. always. Um, I too took notes, but I'm not going to bother with my notes. As Mrs. Kelly and Mrs. DeCaro said, the key word I think is character. You guys, you guys, everybody. This whole district is character, a great character, and, and that's what makes us what we are. I mean, I'm, I'm so proud to be a part of all this. We spent over an hour just recognizing all the good things happening. I, wow. I, I, what more can I say? Instead of naming everybody again, you know, but thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. DePrima. Anyone else on my left side? Mr. Reed. Yes. Absolutely. I would just like to say quite simply that from kindergarten to seniors in high school, you make us very proud. Thank you. Any other board members? Well, I just want to add my two cents real quick. I just want to echo everything that was said uh, from my fellow colleagues up here. And, uh, you know, again, like Mr. DePrima said, it's a testament to how wonderful this community is. And we have so much going on, and uh, from the volleyball team to the football team to to um, to uh, Carpenter School, Mr. McHugh, and the wonderful things that are happening there um, with Shepherd. You know, there's so much going on, and it's just a testament that this wonderful school district is doing so many wonderful things, and that we can recognize so many so many people for all their hard work and contributions. So, thank you again. With that said, roll call, Mr. Mara. We, we we have a motion already, and we have a second. Sorry. Uh, DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Proud, yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Callie? Absolutely. Dunn? Yes. So resolutions 1 through 11 plus 20 in finance pass. Very yes. well, Mr. Mara, thank you. Moving forward, superintendent's report, so I'll turn it over to Mr. Cittadino once again. There's a lot of recognition. I'll take a 60 second pause, gather my notes, let anyone head to the door if they want to. We have some new now supervisors here, I hear. Yeah. 
Right. Okay, let's reconvene. All right, superintendent's report. As I mentioned earlier, um, you know, a lot of feelings were expressed about the hidden in plain sight program. Obviously, I want to thank this board for staying uh, true and supporting it, recognizing the battle that we have not only in Old Bridge, but, you know, around our nation, uh, fighting overdoses and fighting opioids. And uh, I just want to thank the board. Uh, I think the testament is that we had 805 parents um, or more attend uh, any of the six events that we held. Um, it wouldn't be impossible without Karen Torrisi, Municipal Alliance as well, uh, Detective Pat D'Onofrio, and of course, Doug Collier from the DEA. So thank you, and uh, we're going to keep fighting the fight and make better lives for everyone. Uh, Albert High School graduation was one of the best ever from what I understand. Uh, I was unfortunate I could not be there as I was attending the, the school safety specialist training that was mandatory uh, this week. And from what every, everything I've heard, it was wonderful. I know Dr. Hoker did a great job um, taking the reins on turning over the students, uh, graduating them beyond Oldbridge High School. Uh, Lori Hernandez being there, getting the honorary diploma uh, was great as well. Uh, I know. Uh, Dr. Hoker and I drove down from like 11 o'clock till 1 o'clock in the morning at Project Graduation. I want to thank all the parents and staff that make Project Graduation possible. It wouldn't be possible without that volunteerism, the drive to keep our students uh, safe even after they graduate beyond us and um, bring them home and after having some, uh, some good times. Um, our transportation department, that's a long day for them. It's incredible the work that they do. Uh, they're there early to get the seniors to PNC Art Center, um, they go home, take a break, and then they're right back at it again at night to drive them down to a wall uh, for project graduation. Again, it wouldn't be possible without de their level of dedication. Our transportation department is second to none. Um, twice a year, I have to do the report to the board on HIV, violence, vandalism, and con controlled dangerous substance usage. Uh, I will read it to you. Everyone has it in their packet, the board members. It's a green and white PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I want to thank Diane Duffy uh, from the curriculum office, uh, administrative assistant, does a great job compiling this data for the state report that has to go out twice a year. She collects it from all the schools, the principals, and, you know, as they change the game midstream, she stays on top of it to make sure that we have the right data. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. Cascone, who's our HAB coordinator for district. Um, it's been great with working with um, uh, very difficult situations that be go beyond the, the school when the parents appeal and have concerns. But the reason why I think this year we only had one appeal reach the board levels because of um, the work of Dr. Cascone and trying to mitigate that prior to reaching your level. So it wouldn't be possible without those two pe people. So every year, students are required, students, superintendents are required to report to the Board of Education on incidents of violence vandalism that occurred during the previous school year. The NJDOE has developed a new student safety data system to help districts streamline data entry and ensure more accurate reporting. The system combines and replaces the EVVRS system that we had used up to the previous recording, reporting system and harassment, intimidation, and bullying investigations, trainings, and programs under the HIV ITP system. We are now required to report both alleged and confirmed HIV cases. That's new for this reporting system, so you'll hear some new information here on the new incident report form. We are also now required to report any incident for both special education and general education students that result in disciplinary removal for at least one half day. Disciplinary removals are defined as any instance in which a child is removed from his or her educational placement for disciplinary purposes, including in-school suspension, out-of-school suspension, expulsion, removal, and any other educational setting. The school safety data system requires the collection of input for the following areas. It counts violence, vandalism, weapons, and substance abuse. Results of vandalism will be that police are notified, no complaint, police are notified with a complaint, in-school suspension, out-of-school suspension, expulsions, unilateral removals, removal by an administrative law judge. We'll report on such things as offenders and victims, student offenders, student victims, school personnel victims, student victims of violent criminal offenses. 
We'll also report on programs provided for such disciplinary action, such as assignments of instruction and support services, in-district programming, home assignment, home instruction, and out-of-district programming. Um, just a clarification for parents as we go through this process. We've had it for quite a few years now. Um, when you hear about HIV, it's not, when you hear the word bullying, it's not the term that most grew up with. Um, thinking of rascal, little rascals and, you know, um, smacking someone in the back of the head and taking their milk money um, when it was bullying then is not the legal definition of bullying now, where it has to hit on a certain areas of, that are protected classes um, in which you are acting out against that person because of their protective class and trying to demean them or treat them bias, with bias because of their protected class um, and in such a way that it makes it difficult for them to learn in their learning environment. Definitely has to have that nexus with that enters into the learning environment. Um, the second thing that parents often ask us about when they, they reach out to us is, uh, I want to know how come um, the student only received this discipline or what discipline did they receive? I'm the parent of the victim, I should know. Um, the law does not allow for that. The parents of um, the victim are not allowed to know the specifics of any child's um, discipline, whether it be the child who acts that against yours or any strange child that you don't know anything about. Um, student records, including discipline and academics, is protected uh, under FERPA, and that is also kept sealed away from um, other parents. So why we understand the frustration with dealing with the law and frustration of having to deal with a child who uh, the perception is the child bullied, we cannot release that information as it is protected. So to go through with the report, we will see that we've had in the reporting time of September to December of 2017, that's the first reporting area, um, we're at 12, district-wide we have 12 incidences of violence, zero incidences of vandalism, five weapons offenses, and 21 substance abuse reports. In the area of HIV, we had nine confirmed HIV incidents. They all took place in investigation within nine days, and the board rendered their decision in every one of those. The number of HIV incidences that were reported was 32. All 32 had a 10-day investigation, and the board rendered their decision. So when you see in the back of the agenda, when the board uh, votes on it, that's them taking action. They're either con they get a report every month prior to the board meeting, or around the time of the board meeting, um, it's a, it is a executive summary that has the names of the student victims and alleged perpetrators um, taken, stricken from the record. They only get um, student numbers and so forth, but the, the exact name of the students is not eligible to the board uh, unless the parents do obviously file an appeal. Um, so if we look at the comparison uh, for previous years, obviously, um, on the table that's before the board, you see that in previous years we've run a downward spiral for over 85 um, last year. We're at a total for half a year this year, so 38, so probably on track for to keep around that area of 85 um, total number of incidences. If you looked at the HIV table, the next, next one it has that new column where we have to report out to the state and to the public the number of complaints, alleged complaints of HIV. Um, so that's the first time we'll have a table of that nature. So for the first por portion of period one reporting, we have 32 allegations of HIV, nine of them being confirmed. That in concludes my superintendent's report. However, this evening we do have progress towards goals, and at this time I would ask our director of ELL, our director of arts and arts, um, languages, and everything else we can throw her way, um, Anahita Keeler, to present her report from her department. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cittadino. When he asked me to do this, I don't think he realized that you guys are all going to be here until our next board meeting, which will be, I think, in August. So just hang out for a little bit. Um, so. This year we have a lot of success stories in our world language arts and ESL departments. These are just some of the highlights and I invite all of you to take a look at our screen, um, which hopefully will get to highlight some of the wonderful activities, trips and performances that our students took this year. So let me dive right in. There are four different departments. I'm going to start with world language. Um, several of our students took the national proficiency exams this year, three of which stand out in particular, German, Chinese and French. 
The German national exam was offered to all levels this year. Previously, it had only been offered to levels one and two. This year, students were able to take it in levels one through four, resulting in several students who came home with a first, second, or third place um, medal. Our Chinese program, recognized for six years in a row with the International Confucius Classroom Award, boasted 32 students who took the HSK National College Level Proficiency Exam, where I'm very proud to say one of our students actually scored um, a 200, which is a perfect score. This is a really difficult exam to take because it's scored at a college level Mandarin proficiency. Um, over 75,000 French students nationwide took the National Grand Concours, which is a French exam, this spring. 11 of our Oldbridge High School students ranked either gold, silver, or bronze medal winners. Um, of course, to that end, our students' successes are a direct reflection on our teachers, one of whom is Madame Mali, um, who's a French teacher here at the high school. She was recently recognized not too long ago at a board meeting for receiving the American Association of Teachers of French two-week all-expenses-paid scholarship award to France to attend workshops and work alongside other global innovative educators. We're really proud of her because that's not an easy feat to accomplish. Two other important highlights, which also fall under the world language arena, are one, the seal of biliteracy, which is a national proficiency language exam, which was awarded to 31 Oberge High School graduates this year for demonstrating proficiency in all four domains of language. The graduates have received an actual state of New Jersey world language proficiency seal on their diplomas this year. Um, and two, we now boast three languages out of the five that are offered in world language, excuse me, in Oldbridge, um, who have initiated honor societies at the middle school level. This is the second year for our French Junior Honor Society, and it's an inaugural year for our German Junior Honor Society and Italian Junior Honor Society. And finally, Oldbridge is continuing its own manifest destiny and eastward expansion as we maintain um, our highly successful study abroad programs to China, Germany, Italy, and this year we are incorporating France. We're slowly taking over Europe and Asia. Moving on. In visual arts, our students and schools are consistently being offered opportunities to showcase their talents, two of which I would like to recognize here tonight. First, at the high school level, under the tutelage of Ms. Laura Grozovskaya, 23 of our portfolio art honors students were chosen to have their work published in a statewide publication known as Celebrating Art. And secondly, students at McDivitt Elementary School, under Ms. McHugh's guidance, who's sitting all the way over there today because she's a great art teacher and everybody loves her. And she's here actually supporting one of our newest hires um, who will be recognized later on tonight. Uh, several of the McDivitt art students participated in several contests including the Drug Free Partnership Folder event where three fourth graders from her classes works were selected from 4,250 entries. And a fifth grader, also in Ms. McHugh's class, Lily Kelly, who won a bookmark contest in the state. Um, the winner's artwork um, from the folders and bookmarks are going to be distributed, and I think they already were, because I saw one of the bookmarks with Mr. Cittadino earlier, to every school in New Jersey. Moving into the ESL arena, um, I just kind of want to put a little um, quantifier in here, or qualifier in here. The ESL arena is where students can potentially face unique challenges, um, having to not only succeed in the content area of each subject, but being compelled to do so while attempting to learn English. I wanted to first recognize and congratulate all of our teachers in ESL because they do a tremendous amount to bring our students into the general education classroom. And secondly, wanted to congratulate the readers of the PAC program, specifically at Cooper School with Ms. Fuentes, who is our ESL teacher there. In this program, our ESL students read to a non-judgmental doggy audience, it's my favorite part of any day, and they have actually shown significant improvement in the last two years that we have implemented this program, where they have shown improvement in their reading skills and also in their confidence. We're really proud of it because this particular program has already been selected as a best practice and also as um, an excellence in character education program. 
251 ESL students in Oldbridge take the access standardized uh, English exam each year, depending on how many students are in our program. This year, there were 251. And I'm proud to say that this year, 40% of all of our test takers scored at either a proficient or above proficiency level. Um, this is a huge accomplishment for our ESL students. And finally, we should know that success is not only measured through scores and tests, but in everyday exercises and opportunities that we provide at Oldbridge for all general education learners as well. So to that end, we need to recognize and celebrate current and former ESL students who are selected to be in our general education programs such as BAND or CHALLENGE or even our honors programs or student council. These are not easy feats to accomplish. And one student who I specifically wanted to recognize tonight is a young gentleman named Yusuf Dafthani. He is a cheesequake fifth grader. I guess he just graduated from fifth grade. Yusuf not only served as the elected president of Cheesequake School, Cheesequake Student Council, excuse me, this past school year, but he's also um, a former ESL student. So overcoming obstacles is par for the course for many of these students, and I truly congratulate them and admire them because they inspire us to do better every day. And finally, last but not the least, our music department. Um, you've already heard it all tonight, so I will try to be brief. Um, there are many, many amazing things happening in our music department every day. It's even hard for me to keep up. Um, very quickly, the Oldbridge Elementary Drumline is a new program this year that brings the drumline curriculum and culture to the fifth grade level, offering them several opportunities throughout the year for rehearsal and live performance, one of which um, some of you may have already witnessed last week, where the fifth grade drumline created a collaborative Instagram video featuring an NYU master's drummer student. Um, this particular experience, experience was not only fun, but it has already been viewed on Instagram with over 57,000 views. Um, as of right now, this is the only program of its kind in our area, potentially in the nation. We have a lot of fun things planned for them, including potentially um, traveling to Indianapolis next year and eventually doing a collaborative joint program with China. Um, the Excuse me. Next, the three there were three students from Oldbridge who underwent a rigorous auditioning process for the Regents and All State ensembles. Um, they had to be selected into these prestigious ensembles, and our students actually were placed into first and second seat, which means a lot for them. The students at the high school were Nick Kateriniak and Stephen Perry, and we had one student who made it into the middle school Regents band, and her name is Shreya Utakar. Congratulations to them. And finally, our marching band and indoor percussion. Our marching knights won first place as the best percussion in the state, and they were fourth place overall in the state. And you've heard everything about the indoor percussion. They ranked number one in the nation all season, and they received second place silver, silver medal at World Championships in Dayton, Ohio. Um, they were also awarded fan favorite, as you heard. This is the highest accompli accomplishment to date, but of course, we're waiting to see what they do next year. And just something to look forward to, as Mr. Cittadino mentioned, um, next year, or excuse me, in December, our marching band has been selected to participate in the Pearl Harbor Commemoration Parade in Hawaii. So that's it. Thank you for your patience, and thank you to the board for supporting the arts and music and language programs. It would not be possible without beautiful staff like Ms. McHugh, who is represented here today, like Ms. Thatcher, Mr. Bell, and Mr. Good, who were here earlier. Love working with them. So thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, any correspondence, please? No correspondence. Very well. Moving forward, special committee reports. Any reports for this evening? Yeah, I have a short one. Mr. Sulkowski? Okay, we had a meeting on May 30th, and uh, it was curriculum, and we had a couple of guest speakers. Mr. Schumacher provided the committee with a report on the current state of initiatives regarding the state of district science program, including the administration recommendations to committee for K through five science series scheduled for 2019 and 2020. 
uh, Dr. Cascone provided a proposal for the revision of the freshman civics, including co uh, component college and career readiness, academic skills, and character education. This course would not only enhance the existing civics course, but would enable the district to expand its K, our kids at college program into secondary uh, pursuant to the strategic planning. Uh, we also had a report on uh, number three, which I didn't write down, on the adult night school. Dr. Cascone and Mr. Carfail presented a a uh, revised proposal for the Overbridge High School in accordance with the district strategic plan for the adult high school. Uh, we have approximately 30 students that are struggling or have struggled through our school system that now currently aren't attending. And what would happen is if we set this program up, it would cost the district, they would wind up with a uh, diploma, it would cost the district approximately $57,000. And that's a good investment for the 30 kids that do not have a diploma. And that's basically the report. I'm all for the third one, which is the adult high school. These kids need help. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Solokowski. Anyone else? Nuts. Yes, Mr. Dunn. Yes, Mr. Yes. Dinoff. Thank you. We have the district held a technology committee meeting on May 17th. The committee discussed park testing review. With the purchase of additional devices and the Wi-Fi enhancements, the district was able to reduce the amount of testing days at each school. The bring your own device networks were disabled during testing periods and the testing period went very well with no major concerns. Delta team update. The Delta team has been meeting to narrow down functions that teachers will be expected to incorporate into their curriculum. Mrs. Moran has been working with Dr. Hoker to develop technology topics for the Oldbridge Summer Institute, the Oldbridge Professional Learning Academy and in-service days. Facilitators were asked to submit their ideas for workshops. Future Ready Schools update. Future Ready Schools began as a federal program and Oldbridge Township has already been recognized as a Future Ready School District. Memorial and Cooper Schools are now applying to be recognized as a New Jersey Future Ready School on the state level. Computer teachers at Memorial and Cooper Schools have been working with Mr. Titmus, technology integration teacher, to collect evidence and artifacts for different indicators required in the certification process. Once the Memorial and Cooper Schools qualify, we will have a template to push the rest of our schools through. Summer projects. The district is eligible for up to a 50% reimbursement for any infrastructure projects that deliver internet to our classrooms and students through E-Rate. As a result, projects planned for this summer include re replacing peripheral switches at the OBHS, the GNC, and many elementary schools. The district is also ex will be doubling our bandwidth from one gigabyte to two gigabytes. Devices. The district met with GovDeals.com to discuss the sale of iPads and switches. The technicians are in the process of reclaiming I the iPads. Our first goal is to sell approximately 800 iPads so we can utilize the funds for further technology upgrades. Old Bridge in the Tech News, Flip Flipgrid Student Voice Bus Tour. Flipgrid is a tool that is now being utilized throughout the district. The focus is giving students a voice through video. Flipgrid did a student voice bus tour for Teacher Appreciation Week and one of their stops was right here in Old Bridge. Teachers who attended received giveaways to use in their classroom from Flipgrid. Microsoft PR event. A representative from Microsoft visited Old Bridge to meet with Dr. Cascone, Mr. Titmus, Mr. Celentano, and Mr. Yenizelli. The Microsoft rep then ob observed Mr. Yenizelli's class and saw how he was effectively incorporating Microsoft products and fostering digital literacy all in his classroom. A week later, Mr. Yenizelli received an invitation to present at a press event at, at the Microsoft store in New York City on May 17th. He presented a demo lesson to 29 members of the press and provided a background of Old Bridge and the successful integration of technology taking place here. This was featured in a wonderful article in the press and on the district website. Lastly, in other discussion, Ms. Moran stated that we are currently uh, have two college interns working with the technology department who worked um, very well with the technology department this school year. They are now on the agenda this evening to continue in the summer. Mrs. Moran also worked with Pauline Georges and Mrs. Hunter, the high school cooperative education teacher, to place seven Oldbridge High School student interns with the technology department this summer to conduct vital work while gaining valuable experience and possibly to continue on to next year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dinoff. Very good. Uh, there's something I would like to add. What happened was that it wasn't on the agenda, but the Oldbridge uh, Marching Nights uh, came to the uh, agenda meeting that we had over there. And uh, what happens is they have a, I guess the traveling nights they call themselves. These are the parents with the, with the band. And all the money that they raise, they do it with fundraisers. 
they're looking for not a donation, but they're looking for the board to help them out with around twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars with all their expenses. A lot of these people in the band are holding up their instruments with rubber bands and other things. Hopefully, we can shift the money from one area to another area. So I, I am speaking up for the Overbridge Band. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Solokowski. Mr. Dunn. Yes, I Mr. did have Freeman. a committee meeting last month, but I am not prepared with a report at this time. Very well. We'll have it next month. Yes. Thank you, August. Mr. Prim. August meeting. Correct. Okay. Moving forward, facilities use. There's nothing here. And now, hearing of the residents on the agenda items only. So, if you want to speak about anything that's in this pamphlet, the agenda, please come up to the podium now. Yes, Mr. O'Neill. Uh, hi, I'm Tim O'Neill from the OBEA. I wanted to ask a question about finance items 22 and 23. <clears throat> um, at the budget meeting a couple of months ago, there was a lot of talk about the uh, ever-increasing cost of insurance premiums. And I'm noticing that um, on tonight's agenda, the commercial insurance renewal, the total there is only a 1% increase. And uh, thankfully, the prescription rate, which has been going up somewhere between 10 and 20% the past few years, is only going up 4%. Uh, dental isn't going up at all. And vision is only going up 2%. So I was wondering if somebody um, directly involved in the budget process could explain a little bit about how these actual numbers compare to the projected numbers that were used for the budget. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? <clears throat> the biggest piece of the uh, projection for health benefits is for uh, the medical benefits. Uh, that renewal is an estimate on the basis of information provided by a consultant that the state uses to project premiums for the upcoming year. Those rates will not increase until January 1st. The projected increase for the state health benefits plan at this point is 13 percent. I believe we budgeted 12 percent for that increase, at that, and that was the information that was available at that point. In terms of the prescription coverage, the original projection based on our experience through December 31st, uh, when the budget process is, uh, is ongoing, was a 10 percent increase. Uh, as the months continued and we had and our experience was updated that projection or that actual number turned out to be a four percent increase effective on July 1st so the answer to your question is that when during the budget process we use the best information available that's provided to us by our professional consultants to prepare the budget thank you mr. mayor anyone else on agenda items only not seeing anyone, I'm going to close this portion of the meeting. Moving forward. Policy. May I have a motion, please? To Carol, motion. Up, oh, that's the whole first reading? Yes. Got it. Okay. So, with that said, any discussion or concerns? Yes, uh, bylaws 1052, board officers. Uh, I would like to table this one until the next meeting for discussion with the entire board because most of them were at, weren't at the last meeting. Mr. Solikowski, uh, I'll grant you your wish to have a motion to table it, yes. and we'll vote as a board to determine whether that's the course of action we want to proceed with. So are you going to make it a formal motion? I make the motion to table it. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Very well. So the motion is on the table. We have a second. Any kind of discussion or concern? Yeah. Can you just clarify? We're not voting on this Correct. tonight, right? This is just Correct. the first, first, first reading. reading. So the, the, we're effect, the effect of Mr. Solikowski's motion, if it's approved by the board, is that the first reading would be moved to August, and then the second reading of this one would be bumped along to September. Okay, um, there was only, I'm gonna say one and a half board members at, at the policy meeting. 
<laughs> because um, I, I was I was there, and Mr. Mr. Duprima uh, came um, as well. So, um, but I am just to clarify what Mrs. Cowley said. I'm not part of the committee. I just went as a board member. So, if we don't table the first reading, do we have an opportunity to discuss it as a board before? the second reading in August. Only if there were a policy meeting. You would have the discussion at the agenda session in August, I think, is where you would have. And then if, if it were not tabled, you would have the discussion in the agenda session in August. If it were tabled, you would have the opportunity for discussion at the agenda sessions in both August and September. So we have an opportunity to discuss it if it's not tabled. Yes. Okay. Now, Ms. Kelly, I know that this has been a line of contention with the board, and the board understands what the policy is and what we're reverting back to. I know it's been, you know, one of those concerns of the board. I know that most or all the board members understand what the policy change is. It's reverting back to the original policy that was changed two years ago. So we have the option right now to table it and discuss it once again and go through that whole process, or we can deny the motion. Uh, and it will be up for first reading tonight. So it's whatever the board desires. That's why I allowed uh, the motion to come up by Mr. Solkowski. So with that said, any other discussion or concern? I, I just wanted to clarify that if we don't table the first reading, there is still time for discussion before the second reading and a vote. Yes, there and will that, be. And the answer to that is yes. yes. Okay. So with that said, we have a motion and a second to, to table the first reading of the policy aspect of the 0152. So, any more discussion? If not, we'll have a roll call. Mr. Mara, roll call, please. DeCaro? No. DePrima? Being that we could still discuss it in August, I vote no to table. Dinoff? No. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Singh? Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes, Mr. DePrima said we still have the option to, uh, the opportunity to discuss it, so I'm just voting no on tabling it. Done. No. The no's are five, the tabling does not pass. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward, curriculum. Can I ask a question? Just, um, there was a, a, a policy, mandated policy proposal, came out of Strauss SMA on reading, on educating parents on opioids. Um, do you recall which one was? I, I, I vaguely remember it being something about whenever you have parents at mass events, that you, the board has a responsibility to then read the danger of opioids. Is, is, uh, can we it, educate about that? It's actually, uh, Mr. Cedrino, policy 2431, athletic competition, and also regulation 2431.2, which is medical examination prior to participation on a school-sponsored interscholastic or intramural team or squad. That's the shortened title. Okay. Um, the m mass opportunity is just that whenever students are actively seeking to participate in a school-sponsored event, information now has to be distributed to them. It is the state taking the opportunities uh, when they can get them uh, to make sure that students, families, parents, and guardians have that information at, at every turn. So similar when you, you attend a basketball game, you attend a football game now, the state has mandated that we have to read our code of conduct for parents and behaviors and bullying before the game starts. We all have to read about um, events such as um, crisis events, you have to read about how to exit, how to exit strategy, you'll have exit strategy in, in case there's a tornado, there's this, and now the state is mandating, kind of like what we've done with our eighth grade program, that when you have the parents together, now you have to educate the entire audience about the dangers of overdose and opioids too. Uh, the lang this language is not actually geared towards an a live and in-person audience so much as at the time of application for participation. So it's, uh, it's, it's documents, not presentation. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cittadino. Moving forward, curriculum professional development, items one through nine. May I have a motion, please? Callie, a move. Dinoff will second. Thank you, Ms. Callie and Mr. Dinoff. Any concerns or conversation? Not seeing any roll call, Mr. Mayor. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolutions one through nine pass. Very well, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward, athletics, items one and two. May I have a motion, please? I'll move it. Thank you, Ms. Lent. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Conversation or concern? Discussion? Not seeing any? Roll call, Mr. Mayor. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolutions one and two. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward. Finance, items one through 27, excluding 20, which we voted on during recognition. May I have a motion, please? Callie, I'll move. Thank you, Ms. Callie. May I have a second? DeCaro, a second. Thank you, Ms. DeCaro. Discussion concerns? Not seeing any. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolutions 1 through 27, excluding 20, pass. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Non certificated personnel office, items 1 through 9. May I have a motion? Lent will motion. Mr. Singh, Ms. Lent, thank you. Discussion or concern? Yes, I have uh, some concerns. Very well, Mr. In Sultan. the past, I guess about a month and a half or two months ago, I asked that on the, all the agendas that 12-month contracts somehow be identified. And I only see one or two people that were there identified. Dr. Hoker, yes, I asked that about three months ago, two months ago. I, I didn't hear what your question was. The question is, do we have any 12-month contracts over here instead of 10-month contracts? I know the teachers have, all have a 10-month contract. The secretarial staff that are starting on July 1st are 12-month employees. Which are? Correct. Any others? They are replacing current 12-month employees. I understand. Employees. Anything else, Mr. Solokowski? How about in regular certified personnel or any 12-month contracts in that? We're not there yet, Mr. Solkowski. You're out of order, please. Thank you, sir. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Uh, discussion. We're not finished. Well, you had your opportunity. Would you like to continue? Uh, yes, I would like to continue. Very well. Please finish. First of all, my proposal is that as people retire and they have 12-month contracts, that they will be replaced in their uh, job description would be rewritten to a 10-month contract. You have to remember that the state of New Jersey and the taxpayers were behind billions of dollars already in red because of the situation. We just can't keep giving out these 12-month contracts. My proposal is to give these people a stipend for one or two, three weeks, whatever we need them for. And that would solve the problem at the state level, and it would save our kids and grandkids later on because somebody has to pay for all this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Olkowski. You have the opportunity to share your thoughts with the board and also with the administration. So I, I, I appeal to you, if you want to have those considered, please submit them and they will consider it. Okay, uh, I'll said, be separating one, two, three, four, and five. You're separating, excuse me, we already have a motion. You can still separate? Yeah. You mean two through five, don't you, Mr. Olkowski? All right, don't you mean two through five, or do you include the leaves of absence? I'm sorry, two through five. Okay. So you then. 
Okay, so we're separating out two, three, four, and five from our motion. So we're going to vote on number one, six, seven, eight, and nine, and then we'll vote on the second. Mr. Mayor, roll call. Lent. Yes. Reed. Yes. Singh. Yes. Solikowski. Yes. Callie. Yes. DeCaro. Yes. DePrima. Yes. Dinoff. Yes. Dunn. Yes. Resolution 1 and Resolution 6 through 9 pass. Very well. Uh, Items resolu two. Resolutions 2 through 5, uh, Lent. Yes. Reed. Yes. Singh. Yes. Shulikowski. No. Callie. Yes. DeCaro. Yes. DePrima. Yes. Dinoff. Yes. Dunn. Yes. Resolutions 2 through 5 pass. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Before we move on, I just want to, Mr. Slikowski, in the future, you're asking that we put a, some kind of asterisk or something if it's a 12-month employee? So, uh, if it's a 12-month contract, what you have to do is put 12 and then in parentheses, the rest are all 10. Okay. I just want to make sure that we do it as you would like it to be done. So tw you'd like a 12 in a parentheses somewhere on there? Uh, would, in, in that particular heading, yes. So if it's a person that's going to get a 12-month contract, you have to specify. And all the rest are going to be 10 on the agenda. Mr. Solkowski, we do discuss this during the agenda session, so you are well aware that these are 12-month employees. So if, if, if all I wasn't aware. Excuse me? I wasn't aware at the last meeting. Okay, very well. So this is discussed at the agenda session. So if, if you need more information, you get clarity and more details at the agenda session. Uh, the administration will see how they could uh, alter the agenda to give some sort of notification of a 12-month employee. Thank you. You're welcome. Moving forward, non-certificated personnel operational items one through three. May I have a motion, please? Dinoff will move. Thank you, Mr. Dinoff. Can I have a second? DeCaro, second. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Any concerns or discussion? Yeah, discussion on number one. I noticed that we're hiring A through G students in the, uh, uh, for the summer program at approximately $10 an hour. Can somebody explain this to me, basically what they're going to be doing? I'm going to ask our Director of Technology Services, uh, Ms. Moran, to come to the dais, and she can give a great idea of what's going on here. Thank you, Ms. Moran. I am going to vote yes on this, but I just want the public to know that we are hiring students and that we're doing the right thing for the kids. But you can explain it anyway. Yes, Mr. Silikowski. These are students that are currently enrolled in Mr. Cangelosi's uh, computer classes, the AP classes and advanced classes, and they will be working alongside our techs, reclaiming the iPads, cleaning the iPads, working to um, re-image all of the streams which we just distributed this year to prepare them for the next school year. In addition, as you know, as a teacher, you don't have the same enrollment in classes every year. So one year you may have, have 25 kids in a class, the following year you may have more or less. So all of those uh, carts and all of the tubs which are holding those technology uh, devices need to be um, audited and, and refit for the upcoming school year based on enrollment. So these uh, kids will be helping us with all of that. And just as a point of reference, uh, we asked several vendors to provide us with um, pricing and what it would cost to have outside um, an, an additional tech come and work with us, one tech, it would cost the board close to $80,000. So um, we're very, very happy to have them with us. They all drive. Their, their schedules ha have already been set. Uh, we will be meeting with them um, next week to explain to them their job responsibilities uh, and also to provide them with a training program. Uh, on the other side, we've already met with our district technicians, and they know what they can do and what they can't do with, with 
uh, working with these students. So we've been vigilant about moving forward with the kids. Uh, we have two remaining um, tech, uh, interns who have graduated college and will be staying with us into September to, to get us through. So we have a lot of work ahead of us, including our summer projects with um, changing out uh, switches and, and other projects that we have that would not include them. So, and we also have to work around our technicians' uh, vacation schedule. So that's why having a full force during the summer is so important. Thank you very much for your input. I just wanted the public to know that we're doing the right thing for the kids. We need more programs like this. And what happens is we're not only saving the district money, but we're educating these kids and giving them hand, hands on when it comes to this type of work. Thank you again for your input. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Moran. Any other discussion? Not seeing any, roll call, Mr. Mayor, please. Reed. Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolutions one through three passed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward, non-certificated personnel, other items one through 13. May I have a motion, please? Callie will move. Ms. Callie, thank you. Can I have a second? Mr. Carroll will second. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Is there any discussion or concern? Mr. Mayor, can you note uh, Ms. Callie's abstention on number 10? Not seeing any discussion or concern. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Singh? Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolutions 1 through 10 pass. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward, certificated personnel. Items 1 through 41. May I have a motion, please? Reed will motion. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Second, please. On second. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Concerns, discussion, conversation? As concerns, are any of the people that we're hiring in certified personnel uh, attached to a 12 month contract? Would you go right down the list? Thank you. I can tell you that all of the administrators, the principals are on here and they are 12 month employees. The staff members that are in number three are the teaching staff members are 10 month employees. Do you want me to go name by name on each individual item? I would appreciate um, it. Go by number. Dr. Hoker, if you help me out, um, I left off at number 38. So I don't think actually, I think that's it. So um, 25 are the principals, correct? So Mr. Sarkowski, you have number 25, which would be our administrators, uh, in-school administrators. You have the hiring of Ms. Christine Doherty, a supervisor for uh, special education, replacing Ms. Schutz. That's a 12-month position, number 27. Uh, move the board. We're uh, amending the supervisor of interventions. We discussed that um, two months ago in an agenda meeting to a 12 month position, number 29. Um, number 36, I'm a 12 month position currently. Um, Mr. Cittadino, yes. I don't know if you said number 26, but 26 is a transfer, but it is a 12 month to a 12 month. Oh. Okay, 26 there. Um, Dr. Hoker is a 12-month position currently. Um, Mr. Mara, 12 months? Yep, Mr. Mara is 12 months. And I think, <laughs> I think that's it. We'll, um, we'll put something like in the front, or like an asterisk, or come up with some acknowledgement somewhere in the future. Mr. Silikowski, does it satisfy your curiosity, sir? Yes, I'm going to do some separation here, though. 
Okay, we can do separation, but like I said before, Mr. Solikowski, you know, we can discuss this during the agenda session, and you have the, um, the agenda beforehand, and these questions you can ask uh, via email or a phone call as well. Oh, you're, you're repeating yourself. We already discussed this. Thank you. I understand, but I'm just making it a point. Are you doing a separation? Yes, I am. Could you please share so we can move forward with the meeting, please? Okay, separating number 24. That's for discussion. Number 29. Number 31. Number 36, number 37. And that's it on the separations. Okay, so to repeat, 24, 29, 31, 36, and 37, does that compute? Yes, thank you. Very well. Anything else, any other discussion of concern or separations with certificate of personnel? Not seeing, Mr. Maurer? Sulikowski, this is on, this is on one through 41, excluding 24, 29, 31, 36, and 37. Yes, thank you. Sulikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Singh? Yes. Dunn? Yes. So resolutions 1 through 41, excluding 24, 29, 31, 36, and 37, pass. On resolutions 24, 29, 31, 36, and 37, Sulikowski. Okay, number 24, uh, Supervisor of Intervention Services, which is D5. Uh, currently, the person has a 10-month contract. Mr. In Sulikowski? Yes. Uh, we're voting on 24, 29, 31, 36, and 37. No more you discussion had, on them? You had your chance to discuss. You want to have future discussion? Yes. Please make it quick. Okay, I would like to uh, let the public know I have an example here. On one of the 12-month contracts, right now, the, this particular person is making approximately $124,000, $125,000. With the 12-month contract, that person will go up to approximately $137,000, $138,000. Given the 30 years that that person is going to put in. Mr. Silicast. Yes. Let's be very careful that uh, you don't identify any. I'm not identifying. The, well, the position. There are some very intelligent people in the room, and when you talk about people's salaries and years of service, the field gets relatively narrow. Please be careful because nobody has been riced. Okay. okay. Basically, on one of these positions, or all of them, uh, with a 12-month contract, it's going to cost the taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars at the very end to keep these people going. And my kids and my grandkids and their kids are going to have to pay for this because the state does not have any more money. I mean, we're only contributing so much. And I want to be voting no on those numbers that I separated. Uh, I just can't go along with any 12-month contracts. Okay, on the superintendent and the assistant superintendent, can I discuss this? Yes, you can discuss it. It depends. What, it depends. What, what, what did you have in mind? Okay, what do I have in mind? What I did is I, put, I spent some time on a computer and I went through New Jersey, what superintendents are making in other districts. Uh, uh, we're not, we can't discuss that. Mr. Cittadino has not been riced and his okay, contract. Okay, no problem. We're, we're in the middle of a five-year contract with him. Anyway. I understand. Thank you for informing sorry, me. Sorry to cut you off. Very well. Anyone else? Not seeing anyone, roll call, Mr. Mara, for 24, 29, 31, 36, and 37. Sulikowski? No on all of them. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Singh? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolutions 24, 29, 31, 36, and 37 pass. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. M Mr. Dunn. Yes. I'd like to just acknowledge we have at least two, unless I'm missing anyone else, of our uh, new hires in the audience. 
We have Megan Pang, who will be our new elementary art teacher. Okay. And Christine Dougherty, who will be our new um, supervisor for special services. Congratulations and welcome. Well, well, welcome. You know, it's refreshing to see such. Oh, hey, Jacqueline, Gill, Jacqueline Gill will be teaching fifth grade at Cooper. Sorry about that. I couldn't see you over there. So I want to welcome the three new hirees. I think that you will fit into this wonderful school district very well. Knowing Ms. Gill over there uh, from Cooper School, I think that everyone has what it takes to excel and to continue this district in the right road. Congratulations again. Thank you. Miss, I have to go through it. Yeah, say. right? Do you want to go through it? So I just have to share with you, we're, we love our pets here in um, Old Bridge, and I just... And we love doing interviews. I yes, yes. We had a lot of fun doing these interviews, um, and we learned about Miss Pang that she has a pet pig, Penelope. You just can't throw it out there that way. So... <laughs> How big is the pet pig? So that she goes in her, she oh, comes in an interview and she story. goes, oh, I'm so glad I made it. I had to drop off my pig at the veterinarian. And he jumped over the back seat into the front seat. So I'm thinking, oh, it's like a little pot belly pig, like a 25, 35 pounder. I said, oh, so how big's your pet pig? She goes, 150 pounds. That's like a human jumping over the back seat. To the, so, so, you know, who knows? We have therapy dogs in district. Maybe we'll have a therapy pig. And interestingly, Penelope paints. Well, welcome again, and it's good to have a therapy pig. I'm sure you'll join the club of ther therapy dogs that we have, so mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful news. Okay, so moving forward, non-certificated personnel, personnel transportation. Items one through three, may I have a motion, please? Lance will move, move it. Thank you, Dinoff Ms. Lentz. second. Thank you, Mr. Dinoff. Any discussion or concerns? Not seeing any roll call, Mr. Demara. Callie. Yes. To Carol. Yes. To Prima. Yes. Dinoff. Yes. Lent. Yes. Reed. Yes. Singh. Yes. Solikowski. Yes. Dunn. Yes. Resolutions one through three pass. Supplies, equipment, services, items one through 25. May I have a motion, please? Reed will motion. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Can I have a second? Callie will second. Thank you, Ms. Callie. Okay, uh, Mr. Mara, do you want to explain uh, items 24 and 25 regarding the bids that were received regarding our kiosks? Uh, yes, Mr. Dunn, I was waiting for you to ask for discussion. Uh, so today we, um, we opened bids for the security kiosks that will be positioned in each of the schools throughout the district and uh, we the the bid proposals so far exceeded the the budget estimates that we will be required to go out to either do a second bid or try to do the con this project ourselves and we're looking seriously into doing it ourselves because the average cost of the kiosks is about twenty thousand dollars and we need sixteen of them which is roughly $320,000. So the markup from these contractors is over $700,000 to install them when they pretty much get plugged in at each facility. So we're, we're taking a look at a hard look at doing this, buying the kiosks directly uh, and installing them using our own um, time and material bids for ele electrician and for uh, uh, concrete work so we're very disappointed over these proposals that's why they're being rejected mr. mayor I just want to say thank you you know you are looking after the taxpayers dollar by recognizing the fact that these were uh, over uh, bid on the number and obviously the direction that you want to go in um, will save the taxpayer a tremendous amount of money and these kiosks are very uh, needed for for our security upgrades um, but thank you it's very refreshing to see that. 
Mr. Dunn, can I just ask one question, please? Absolutely, Mr. Mr. Mara, when you say do it ourselves, do you mean literally like our maintenance guys will? No, no, the kiosks are, a key, first of all, most people may not know what a kiosk is, but when you go into um, the shopping center and you see in the middle of the aisle, you see those little photo booths mat. or a photo, it's a photo mat. So each school is, will have uh, one of those kiosks at the front of the building, uh, viewing the entire building and all, the, all its perimeters. So you, they're prefabricated. You buy them prefabricated. And the cost of each one of the ones that we want to buy is approximately $300,000 or is, is uh, $20,000. So uh, we would buy the kiosk ourselves, have them shipped here, and then through time and material bids that we already have on hand, not with our, what, not with our employees, but with our contractors that already have a bid with us, they will do the installation uh, at, because it's really just the electrical installation and also the work that has to be done for the concrete pad. So it's not our, it's, it's, it's through existing bids that we have and we would purchase them ourselves. And actually we will be purchasing, if we go that route, we will be purchasing the kiosks under a state contract, so it will not be necessary to go out to bid. Mr. Mara, uh, on these uh, boots that we're picking up, the person that's going to be in the boot, what are the capabilities? What will they actually see? Sorry, Mr. Stolkowski. Uh, again, that is, that's part of the agreement that you approved under finance. Tonight. Okay, so it can't be Shared discussed. Service, it's, it's security information okay. for your buildings. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thank you, Mr. Mara. Any other discussion or concerns? Not seeing any. Roll call, Mr. Mara. DeCaro. Yes. DePrima. Yes. Dinoff. Yes. Lent. Yes. Reed. Yes. Singh. Yes. Solikowski. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Dunn. Yes. Resolutions 1 through 25 pass. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward, transportation items 1 through 8. May I have a motion, please? Lent will motion. Thank you, Ms. Lent. Second? Thank you, Mr. Singh. Any concern or conversation, discussion? Not seeing any. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolutions 1 through 8 pass. Wonderful. Moving forward. Miscellaneous items 1 through 8. May I have a motion? Dinoff will move. Thank you, Mr. Dinoff. Second? Callie will second. Thank you, Ms. Callie. Any conversation or discussion? Not seeing any roll call, Mr. Mayor. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Singh? Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolutions 1 through 8. Seeing nothing at board secretary and board's business, we'll move on to hearing of the residents on any school related matters. So anything that concerns you or you want to speak good or bad, please come up to the podium now. Good evening, members of the board, and thank you for letting us speak here tonight. My name is Andrea Babaiko, and I am here representing the noon hour supervisors from Old Bridge High School's main campus who have received a reassignment email from Mr. Mara's office. During the May 2018 Board of Education meeting, a list of names for rehire in the noon hour section was posted, and all of the noon hours for the Old Bridge High School, Maine, were on the list and approved for the 2018-19 school year to be rehired in the main campus. We had been asked by our direct supervisor if all of us had planned on returning the next school year to which we all replied in the affirmative. No mention was ever made of reassignment. Then on June 20th, while we were serving the school in a whole, po whole monitor capacity, again, our supervisor came to us and asked us to sign our evaluations. Again, no mention of reassignment. 
On June 21st, the last day that we were asked to work, we had our evaluations place, uh, placed in our sign-out book, and nothing further was said about the following school year. On Friday, June 22nd, six of us received an email from Ronnie Dima, assistant to Mr. Mara, telling us that we were to be reassigned to one of three elementary schools, and we were to choose what school we would like to be placed in and give them an answer no later than June 29th, 2018. This came as a great shock to all of us. No explanation was given at the time, just that we were to be moved from our three-hour positions to a two-hour position. And that we were, and, and that was that. Uh, when we called or emailed Ms. Dima, uh, we were told there is a greater need for noon hour supervisors in the elementary school. In the main building of the high school right now, there are 10 noon hour supervisors. Our job, according to the job description, is to maintain discipline and order, but we do much, much more than that. We do whatever we are asked by administration, and we go above and beyond what the casual bystander sees. All of us have been noon hour supervisors for over 15 years, some well over. We have been there to be the lifeline to the students when it seems to them that no one understood or cared to listen. We are there at the beginning and end of every lunch period when teachers who are on lunch duty haven't gotten there yet because they are contractually obligated to be in their classrooms at the beginning and end of classes. Security guards are out monitoring the hallways, ensuring safe passage for all students, making them unavailable to be in the cafeteria at the very beginning and the very end of lunch period. Student safety is everyone's number one priority and concern. Students with medical passes can come to the cafeteria before the bell so they don't have to face the throngs in the hallway. If there's to be only four noon hour supervisors, and they are monitoring the bathrooms, as we did this previous year, at the request of administration, that does not leave enough supervision or help for the students in the cafeteria. As dedicated people who have worked and lived in Oldbridge for decades, we have through the years developed relationships with students who may not be on the administration's radar. The top students and the troubled students get noticed all the time. We are there for the students in the middle too. We have given money from our own pockets to students who may not have been able to get lunch. We have reported to administration when a student consistently doesn't have lunch money so that they may intervene and resolve the issue. We have prevented physical fights from becoming, um, uh, I'm sorry, we have uh, prevented physical fights from occurring just by having conversations with kids who might otherwise have fought. We've been there to console a student when a relationship that might have come to an end, and we are there to rejoice with them in their accomplishments. Since 2012, we have also awarded a scholarship to students who might not otherwise receive one. That will come to an end. When a special needs student is left in the cafeteria by themselves at the end of lunch, we are the ones who have escorted them back to the class or to administration. We have curtailed students vaping, etc., in the bathrooms. We have stopped them from stealing in the cafeteria and modern, monitored students' backpacks to prevent theft. We are the administration's eyes and ears. Most importantly, we talk to students who are lonely, sitting by themselves. We monitor their progress, watch for signs of depression and drug use. We show the new student who may be overwhelmed by the size of the school and the selection of the food around. We introduce them to other students. We have dug through the trash at the end of lunch to find the wayward retainer, the eyeglasses, or cell phones. We impact the students' lives every day by going above and beyond our job description. It's commonly said that students remember not always what they learned, but how staff members made them feel. High school students are at an extremely impressionable age, and so by potentially replacing us with security guards, or police officers, you may be creating and projecting an atmosphere of fear rather than that of respect, hominess, familiarity, and care. We understand that in life job cuts happen, but we feel that this decision will negatively affect the high school and its student body more than may have initially been realized. 
Should you still move forward with this reassignment, you will also have impacted the lives of six women who have dedicated their lives to this school for many years, and we will be losing one third of our income going from three hours to two hours. We were reapproved to keep our assignment at the last Board of Education meeting, and each of us were given positive evaluations the day before school ended. Yet, we were sent emails notifying us of these reassignments the day after school ended. We would like to remind the board that we were there for them when they needed our votes, and now we ask for the board's support in return. We ask that the board investigate this matter as it did once before during the financial crisis of a few years ago when it was suggested by high school administration then that noon hours were not needed in the high school. There have been noon hour supervisors in the high school for over 40 years. And we believe that in the current state of the world, it would be a grievous error to start eliminating positions now. Thank you. Thank you. The, you know, the difficult part in running a district and operating the personnel of the district for, you know, 1,200 plus employees is always the personnel piece and putting personnel where our students need them. And I always say that, you know, and it, it gets, it's difficult sometimes with, with, you're dealing with human lives, that we all remember that we are educational facilities, not employment facilities for adults. We're educational facilities for children. So we need to put our resources where we have them at times and where, where they're, they're most needed. Um, so sometimes those, dif those decisions are difficult and sometimes they're not a always appreciated when we do them because the big picture is not always shown or, or seen by everyone. Um, I will review this matter with Mr. Maurer, the high school administration, share those findings with the board and at least they will have that input uh, going forward. I thank you for um, coming forward and sharing the, v the views of the six women and uh, of your unit and I thank you for the work that you do and I wish you the best summer possible sure yes, yes. please so I just want to say one thing we um during those that seven years ago when our um, name my name is Barbara Vaffiato and uh, my job is not in jeopardy um, the previous board was going to cut us also because they felt there wasn't a need at the high school or the middle school. And that board determined that we really, really were needed. And um, if you guys were in the high school, they definitely need us up there. There's no way that four women can do the job that has to be done. I mean, it's safety is the number one thing. And like Andrea said, there's just a million things that we do do. And, and, and it's really, really important. So that's it. I, I thank you for weighing in on that as well. You know, I don't think there's anybody in this room or anybody watching who would not acknowledge that, you know, and we've been blessed that we haven't seen the, the landscape change in high school here, but landscapes across the nation have changed high school from, uh, you know, from incidences in Texas, Parkland, Connecticut, wherever, and it causes us to shift our resources and um, sometimes provide resources that are much more physical, much more, uh, and it's not always the same. And, you know, we'd love to say that we have an infinite amount of finances to, to keep everyone the same um, and keep on adding on to what we have. And you guys, are you there? Number one priority is obviously student safety and, st and building security. And I'd love to say that we can just keep adding on to that without moving resources, but we don't, ha we don't have an infinite well of resources and money to keep on adding on to um, bolstering our, our security. So there will be new security details at the high school. There will be more resources put there towards that um, because as you look around the world, that's the, the hot spot of whatever, at most, where most incidents occur. Um, so obviously we'll be doing that. Some, some of the things that we have, Mr. Silikowski, when he brought it before, we can't always share all the details of what we're putting where and of our security plan. 
uh, and that becomes a hard part in you know, discussing with you because you're not seeing the picture that we're seeing when we have to put there. But I, I totally appreciate your views on it and you taking the time tonight away from your families to be here and sharing your opinions and thoughts with us. Um, if you have any individual questions or so, you can always reach out to me, call me, email me. Um, if you want to say it from there, I'll just repeat it. Go ahead. Thank you. Can I ask a question? I don't know who to address this to, but if we vote on assignment, do we not vote on reassignment? The, reass the reassignments have to go on. It's not on the agenda, Mr. DePrima, right now. So like Mr. Said, you know, said, he's going to inquire and see exactly, you know, more. So they, they received, just to show, they received an email about their preferences, and it wasn't put on agenda yet where those preferences are. So there, there is a there. The conversation started with a need at the elementary school to fill uh, positions, and in conversation about positions, we're constantly looking at staffing. You see many other reass <clears throat> reassignments on the agenda, especially in May and June. Um, we're constantly looking at where we can best place our resources. And Mr. Cittadino said, we don't always have the means to continue to hire additional staffing and we have to utilize the staff where we feel are most appropriate. And, in th and these were conversations that took place after this agenda was prepared, which is why you were not informed earlier in May. So with those conversations, that's when the contact, the email went out to discuss preferences and start that conversation they didn't make this agenda, the reassignments. I and, and the high school main campus is the only place that there is currently three hours and we do not based on these reassignments, we don't have that many positions. So the reassignments are based on the seniority so that the most senior people will stay in those three hour positions. There are all one hour positions also, but the three hour senior, senior people will be moved to two hour positions. The board will get more information um, before the next agenda so that at least we can vet it and discuss it internally to see how we could assist, if any. Uh, but we'll get the information from the administration and uh, we'll discuss it internally. You have to go to the podium if you're talking. Ag again, you're we, have to go there if you keep talking. Again, we, we sincerely <laughs> appreciate with everything that you guys do. You're a very integral part of our district and you do keep the lunchrooms under control, you do uh, a lot of good things. So we're going to discuss it internally, and before the next agenda, we'll, we'll, we'll have some information. Thank you. I have a question. Absolutely, Ms. Um, just because I'm new here, so I'm not fully grasping it. So we voted on keeping the positions, but we haven't yet voted on shifting the position, transferring them, but they received the letter before we could even vote on it? The letter. The letter is an, the, the letter is a notification and a selection of where a person who's going to be subject to a reassignment could end up. This is not board action. You have not voted yet. You won't vote until August. But this was notification once the administrative manpower or staffing levels determination was made. That is how it works. And it's not done yet. So we still have an opportunity to vote on it later. You have an opportunity to get a recommendation as to each change from your administration, and then the board votes on that, yes. Okay. 
Very well. Can I just clarify? We yes. can't put the reassignment on there until we know where they're going. We asked for the preference in order to place staff members by choice based on the openings that we have at the elementary level. Now, what happens if they don't get back to you with the preference? I'm sure that we will reach out to them again. Well, and at a certain point, then we just have to place people, but we would do our best to give them the time, but we don't have another meeting until August, but we have to continue to move forward. But before anything is done, the board will have it say determining the course of, of, of approval. So we will have the final say, and we will work with the administration to ensure that we deal with this accordingly. Yeah, I just think there's some confusion because they're saying one thing with the letters and we're hearing something else. So I apologize if I'm just confused, if I'm lost in this, but it doesn't seem to be the, the same thing. So the letter is indicating that there is a reassignment and that there are specific locations that have available openings. And based on seniority, We're not going to the letter, bring the letter up we, here? We can get, we'll, we'll get the letters we'll out to internal. the board. We have time to get this vetted and determined. So the administration is going to work with us to determine a, a fair resolution. Can they email that letter to individual board members? Mr. Mara's office will send out all the board members the letter that was sent out. Okay, very well. So the administration will work with the board before anything else is finalized so that it could be vetted and determined the right course of action. Anything else? Yes, Mr. Reed. Does, by this action taking place, does that mean we're going to have less of the lunchroom ladies at the high school? Yes. yes. But again, nothing has been determined yet, Mr. Reed. Okay. So we still have time now to vet it before our next board meeting to make sure that the board is comfortable with the direction the administration would like to go. Okay. And we will have the final say whether or not it happens or not. I was a bit confused too. Okay, thank you. Fair enough. It will, thank you. It will probably, given the questions, it will probably be an executive session discussion that we're going to need to have because there are other related, as Mr. Mara and Mr. Uh, Cittadino have said, uh, you can only spend each dollar that you have once, and that's very, very difficult, but that's a discussion that has to be had. Sometimes staff is placed one place instead of somewhere else. Okay, very well. Moving forward, any, any others for the hearing of the residents on any school district item? Andriani. Ah, Mrs. Andriani, welcome. I think I see some words of wisdom. No, no, no. No, no, no. Good no, evening. No. <laughs> Um, I'll try and stay within my five minutes. Um, ordinarily at board meetings, there's always some type of recognition or uh, t somebody takes this, the time if somebody is um, retiring. Um, I didn't hear that this evening for some of the few, but I did notice that Irene O'Kane is um, no longer will be with the district as of June 22nd, which was the last day of, of school. And for those of you who don't know uh, Mrs. O'Kane, she is a security officer at Old Bridge High School. Um, she's no na she is a no-nonsense person, extremely efficient, and she's put in a lot of time and energy to make the school run smoothly from that front area, the reception area when you walk in. So I thought it would be remiss of us if someone at least did not mention to thank her for her years of service. I know that this is a second career for her, but she will still be missed. So I just wanted to take the time to do that. Secondly, um, Mr. Silikowski brought up a question about one of the agenda items about re revised job descriptions. And um, there were three of them, they're supervisors, and he had asked about whether or not they were 12 months. And my question is, I, I'm still not clear if they are 12 months or not. If they are, I just would like to point out that one of them is also on the agenda for summer hours. So you cannot have summer hours if you are going to be a 12-month employee. So I think that 
if it is a 12 month position, the board has approved something and you might need to take another look at that. The last thing that I wanted to ask. Mrs. Andriani, do, yes, you, want to, do you want me to clarify that? No, not, not to me. I just, I, if, it's, if it's a 12 month position. It's, absolutely, absolutely, you gotta it, clarify it's that. It's a 12 month position beginning September 1st. Okay. For the following school year. All right, usually the 12 month positions start July 1st. So I just wanted to make sure that we, all our ducks were in a row. Well, your ducks were in a row. Um, last week, the state legislature voted on a new funding formula for state aid, but I didn't see anything on the agenda. So I was wondering if and how Old Bridge is affected by that new school funding formula. So if somebody could answer that, I would appreciate it. The, the answer to that is that there is no answer right. yet. There's a meeting on uh, Friday with all the county BAs, and we're not sure if the governor is going to sign that legislation. There's a dispute between the governor and the legislature about what's in that package. So at this point, there's, there's, no, there's no answer to that question. All right, there's a, there is already, um, not with social media, but through newspapers, that certain districts have already been notified that they are receiving either a large percentage increase and or a large monetary increase. So if that was out, I just assume that everybody had the information. It's, it's speculation because the governor has not signed the legislation. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Andriani. Anyone else? Not seeing anyone, I'm gonna close this portion of the hearing of the residents. Moving forward. Any old business, Mr. Mara? No new business? At this time, um, asking the board whether or not they want to have an good of the order or yes. Okay, Ms. Callie. Okay, given the hour, I'm gonna make this really quick. Um, first of all, thank you ladies for coming out and um, voicing your concerns and um, but we will discuss. Thank you and for your patience too, because it's after 10 o'clock. Um, I just wanted to congratulate everybody on a great school year. The end of the year was phenomenal. I had the opportunity to attend a elementary school uh, graduation, a middle school graduation where I very nervously gave a speech and uh, the high school graduation and, and uh, all three of them actually moved me to tears as usual. So I just wanted to congratulate everybody on a great year and wish everybody a happy and healthy summer. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Callie. Mr. Caro. Um, well, once again, I you said everything. <laughs> no, um, and also I do wanna echo, um, thank you uh, ladies for coming out and, um, and sharing that with us. And we'll definitely, you know, look into that and, you know, wherever it goes, we'll definitely look into it. Um, I also was at the, uh, the high school, it was my first, um, my first graduation as a board member and what a thrill. I mean, it was such an exciting time and uh, you know, I think it was the best one really. But um, um, we had Lori Hernandez there and um, you know, it was just really great. So um, I, w I was also at uh, Shira, Southwood and Carpenter and um, those were really great also. Those were great ceremonies and, and what um, the schools do for the kids and it's just, um, I just, Mr. McHugh is here tonight, and uh, I just I had said to you that day, you know, one of the things that just impressed me so much was um, every child that received a diploma, the, every single one of those fifth grades, talk about move, being moved to tears. He made a special little, he whispered in each one of their ears as they went by, he shook their hand, and he, that's how well he knows those children. And that, talk about being moved to tears, I was just standing there wiping my eyes. It was really, really nice. That was. Um, that was a great principal, um, as were Shira and Southwood. They were all wonderful uh, ceremonies. Um, anyway, and um, so I want to congratulate the new hires. Um, welcome, and uh, everyone have a great summer. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Mr. DePrima. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Um, <laughs> it would take an hour to list all the, the great things that have been going on in this, in this district. As everybody has said tonight, and those of you who know me personally know how important this is to me, and I just want to say thank you to everybody and have a healthy and safe summer. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Mr. DePrima. Mr. Dinoff. Yes, thank you. I would just like to echo my colleagues and all of their congratulations and wish everyone a very happy, healthy, and restful summer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dinoff. Ms. Slint. Um, earlier this evening, we had a moment of silence for Zach, but I just want to bring attention to his father, Jude, who also passed away with him. Um, Jude was huge in the community with the children. He coached my son for many, many years. So I just want to acknowledge his passing and um, say what a big loss the community is having right now, losing the both of them. Mr. Reed. Very good. Mr. Singh. Yeah, I just want to show those ladies that uh, we, at least I will bring this point up and we will discuss it and we'll do whatever we can. And congrats to the, all the um, recognized people today for their engagements and accomplishments. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Mr. Solikowski. Yes, congrats to all the kids that were in the recognition portion of the agenda tonight. And congratulations to all the students that graduated high school. One door has closed and another has opened in their life, okay? And everybody have a great summer. Thank you. And a safe one. Real quick, I just want to congratulate the 2018 uh, Oberge High School class uh, for graduating. It was a wonderful uh, ceremony and uh, that's all I have to say right now I think my colleagues had said enough and I think it's time to end this may I have a motion to adjourn Callie will move Done thank you. a second thank you all in favor Hello. aye
I'm going to uh, call this meeting to order. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the June business meeting of the Old Bridge Public Schools. Statement of adequate notice by board president pursuant to New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 4104-10. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by advertising such notice in the Home News Tribune, the Asbury Park Press, the board office, the schools, and on channel Cablevision Channel 118 and Verizon Vios Channel 24, and by filing such notice with the township clerk. This meeting was scheduled for 